evidence during their search of Mar-a-Lago. Joyce Vance is back with me and also joining the conversation, Jamil Jaffer, founder and executive director of the National Security Institute and former White House associate counsel to George W. Bush. Uh, Jamil, I'd like to start with you uh, here. Which development from this week stood out the most for you on the legal front? Well, you know, I'm on to me, the most prominent uh, decision was the decision by the 11th Circuit, a three judge panel, including two Trump appointees, uh, making clear that uh, the president wasn't going to get the benefit of special master review for those 100 classified documents and that the Justice Department could go back to using those materials in its criminal investigation. Joyce, if I would have uh, had to advise Trump on what's the worst scenario he could have done, it was appearing on Fox's Hannity earlier this week and giving uh, this version of what he thinks was damage control. Watch this. Is there a process? What was your process to declassify? It doesn't have to be a process, as I understand it. You know, there's different people say different things. But as I understand it, there doesn't have to be. If you're the president of the United States, you can declassify just by saying um, it's declassified, even by thinking about it. Uh, (laughs) Different people say different things. Uh, Joyce, I'm going to go out on a limb and say Trump did not win you over with that legal logic. Well, he didn't. I'm going to say the nicest thing I can say about that interview that he gave, which is that it's irrelevant. It is not necessary for the Justice Department to prove that these documents are classified from the point that it obtained its search warrant on. It's been quite clear that it's traveling under a different theory involving national defense information, which some of this clearly is, government records, which all of this is, or virtually all of it, And perhaps most dangerously for Trump, obstruction of justice. We presume that what DOJ means by that is the fact that there was a certification that everything was returned to the government when Trump still retained material that was marked classified uh, at his hotel. There is a lot going on here, a lot of potential criminal exposure. And very little, if any of it, turns on these materials being classified. Yeah, you got to think uh, Trump's lawyers that evening with Hannity were not too happy about him doing that interview. Uh, Jamil, what's the significance of the DOJ continuing to have access to these classified documents while the investigation is ongoing? Does that does the fact that the investigation is ongoing while the Department of Justice can continue to sift through these documents matter at this point now? Yeah, look, I mean, I think it does matter a lot. I mean, I think the fact that the Justice Department can, can continue to build its case. Joyce is right. A lot of this is about, um, you know, the possession of documents, retain them and the like. But at the end of the day, the, you know, this issue of classification and the question of whether they qualify as national defense information matters a lot. And, you know, so the fact that Justice Department can look at these hundred documents, use them in their potential effort to prosecute and the the uh, you know the ongoing question of how much damage was done continues. That's really important on this issue of declassification. I will say I do think uh, it muddies the water if the president says he declassified them. But his current claim for declassifying them, this idea that he could have just thought it, is ridiculous, right. laughable on its face. It's true, certainly, that he could declassify them in a lot of ways. But thinking of it, not one of those ways. I'm on. Joyce, Trump hasn't complied with the special master's request to uh, back up his claim that the FBI planted evidence uh, at Mar-a-Lago. What do you expect him to do? You know, this is a put up or shut up kind of moment. The judge has been very clear that if Trump wants to proceed with this theory, he's going to substantiate it. And something that we've seen so far is that this new group of Trump lawyers appreciates the fact that some of his prior lawyers have gotten into a lot of trouble. Some of them no longer have licenses to practice law. And they appreciate that they have a duty of candor to the court. They can't say something that's untrue in the pleadings. So they now have a moment where if they want to maintain that the FBI planted evidence at Mar-a-Lago during the search, which is the most insane thing I've ever heard, If they want to maintain that, they've got to be absolutely certain that they can prove it up. Otherwise, we won't see them saying that in future pleadings in front of Judge Deary or anyone else. I suspect we will not hear uh, another peep about that because it's patently false. And and Jamil, to um, to Joyce's point about Trump's lawyers, you know, he Trump reportedly was told late last year that he could face legal liability if he did not return Uh, the government materials that he took with him when he left office. In fact, his former White House lawyer uh, reportedly, allegedly warned of legal exposure that Trump would face. And yet he still did did it anyway. 
You know, I'm on. Is anyone surprised? I mean, the president doesn't take the advice of his senior intelligence officials, his lawyers. Um, you know, he, he runs his own book here. Um, Eric Hirschman was very clear with him. You can't take these records with you. You definitely can't take classified materials. I'm sure other lawyers, the White House Counsel's Office, I know a lot of them, um, would have told him the same advice. But, you know, he didn't take their advice on January 6th. He wasn't going to take it today or, you know, when he left the office. And here he is uh, in a real pickle. I think Joyce is exactly right. Um, his lawyers are going to have to put up or shut up with the judge. And I don't think they've got a lot here. I think Joyce is completely correct on that front. All right, Jamil Jaffer, Joyce Vance, thanks to the both of you for joining us this evening. Greatly appreciate it, as always.